Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to continue our discussion of mountain building processes, building on what we learned about convergent boundaries, talking about other tectonic activities like divergent boundaries and non-boundary mountain building. So let's jump right in. First, we are going to talk about divergent boundaries. And there are two types of divergent boundaries that we learned about. We learned about seafloor spreading. This is what happens under the ocean. This is where new oceanic crust is created at oceanic ridges as those two plates are spreading apart. And we learned about continental rifting. This is when continental crust is stretched to form new spreading centers. This is that process that can result in the formation of new divergent boundaries. So in both of these cases, we have tensional stress pulling plates apart. And the type of mountains that we see associated with tensional stress or that pulling or stretching stress is fault block mountains. We have the horsts and the grabbins, and we have these normal faults. We have some blocks moving up and some blocks moving down. So obviously we're gonna see a lot of these under the seafloor at oceanic ridges, and also where we see continental rifting, where we see spreading of the crust. Near the Great Rift Lakes in Africa, that was a example of continental rifting that we used uh, back in the unit on plate tectonics. And obviously the basin and range province in the western United States, where we see lots and lots of fault block mountains right next to each other. This is a place where there is a lot of stretching or spreading going on right now. If that were to continue, maybe a new divergent boundary forms. But in the meantime, this is forming lots and lots of fault block mountains. Next, I want to talk about non-boundary mountain building. So not related to our edge of boundary processes, we can have mountains forming related to hotspots. So remember, hotspots are formed by upwards convection of the mantle. We get a mantle plume or rising really hot rock that pushes against the crust, and we can have two things that happen. Uh, the first thing by picture number one here, the hotspot or the mantle plume pushes up against the crust, but the crust isn't melting, it's just being pushed up. This is going to form uplifted mountains. So again, we have the mantle plume pushing the crust up, but not causing any melting, so we don't have any volcanism. The other thing that can happen in the middle of a plate, not at the boundary of a plate, is the formation of volcanic mountains. This is going to occur where we have the mantle plume pushing up against the crust, heating it, and we get a little melting of the crust, and the melting of the crust is what forms volcanoes. Again, in both of these cases, the mantle is not punching through the crust. We're not, we don't have the middle of the earth leaking out onto the surface. Um, we just have a little bit of the crust melting and forming these volcanoes, or the crust stays solid and it just gets pushed up and we can form uplifted mountains. These are the two processes of mountain building that we see going on in the middle of plates, not at boundaries. The last thing I want to talk about is a really big process, and by big I mean on a really large scale, uh, and that is called continental accretion. This is a process by which we can actually make continents bigger. Uh, so we've talked a lot about destroying rock at convergent boundaries, but here we're going to look at an example of actually adding to the continents at a oceanic continental convergence. So as we have the oceanic plate subducting under the continental plate, there might be stuff on top of it. We can have lots of sediments. We can have large rock formations sticking out of the seabed. We can have volcanic island chains. We can have smaller continents. Um, so all of this material can be added to the continental plate as the oceanic plate that contains it runs up against that continental plate. So if we look at this map here, this is a map of the western United States. Uh, you can see the outline of Alaska, and down here we've got California and Mexico. The idea that this map is trying to get across is that this kind of darker tan area here, this is the original North American continent. 
everything other than this very interior part, so a lot of California and the Pacific Northwest and all of Alaska, this was all added onto that continent over time through a variety of different chunks of rock being added onto this continent through continental accretion. We have volcanic islands. So everything in purple is rock that was added on to this plate as volcanic islands ran into this continental plate because of the oceanic continental convergence. We have parts of the seafloor. So sediments from the seafloor have been scraped up by that convergent boundary. And we can have smaller continents. Everything in purple is a smaller continent that got scraped off of the oceanic plate it was on and smashed up and now added to part of North America. Uh, we've seen this happen on a really grand scale. We talked about India moving from near Antarctica and running into Asia. That is a huge example of continental accretion. A really, really big piece of material moved across the ocean and got added to the Asian continent. Again, continental accretion, uh, different pieces from the oceanic plate being added to the continental plate as they get scraped off of that subducting oceanic plate. Just like in class when I smashed together those different colors of silly putty as the piece of paper they were on uh, slowly met with that other piece of silly putty. So we're adding on to our continent because of this convergent boundary. And we have a word to keep all these distinct pieces of rocks separate, and those are called terrains. These are blocks of crust that are distinct from those around it. It's very obvious if we have different volcanic islands over the course of millions of years that have been added onto this continent, they're going to be made out of different, very different rocks. And when geologists look at them, it's very obvious that there's these different rocks. The same thing with things from the ancient seafloor or uh, deposits of sediments from the seafloor. They all look very different to geologists when they survey these sites, and these are the different terrains, the very distinct pieces of rock. They are clearly formed by different processes than those around them. So we can see compressional stress here as we are smashing big pieces of rock together on the edge of this convergent boundary, and obviously we are going to see folded mountains created as these terrains are added. So the difference between continental accretion and something like our really big continental, continental convergent boundary like the Himalayas is that this is happening over many, many small collisions over a large period of time. So we are producing folded mountains. They're usually not going to be as big as the folded mountains that we see in a continental, continental convergent boundary. Um, but we are going to also see that they have lots and lots of different types of rocks in them because it's not one big long-term collision creating this. It's many collisions over a really, really, really long period of time creating these mountains. So we get folded mountains with many, many different types of rocks in them. So overall, we've learned about mountain building processes that can produce volcanic and folded mountains at different types of convergent boundaries. We've learned about the production of fault block mountains at different types of divergent boundaries. We've learned about the formation of uplifted and volcanic mountains at hot spots where there aren't plate boundaries. And we've also learned about how folded mountains can form as continents are increased in size through the process of continental accretion.